Hey, my name's Rick and thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about my Tesla solar system. Uh, we're going to do a uh, fairly detailed video here about kind of the whole ball of wax. Basically what my system is, how much it costs, possible tax incentives that are coming our way, um, and then the timeline basically from ordering all the way until when we finally turned it on. I'll give you an idea of how it's been working and we'll also discuss the app a little bit. At the end of the video, if there's any questions you have, you can leave those below or you can contact me by email. You'll also find that below. And hopefully this will be helpful for you if you are considering Tesla Solar or Solar in general. So let's get started. So the system that we actually chose clearly is based on um, kind of average electric bill. They ask you to download all that information when you are initiating this process. And they essentially recommended a 9.6 kilowatt system to us which consists of 24 panels. Um, we ended up with two power walls, and then of course you get the inverter, and then you have uh, the other things that kind of come along with it. Let me just read those to you. Uh, the mounting system, obviously, insulation, the power glide, solar energy monitoring system, and then for 20 years. Um, so the total cost for the system was $39,158. Incentives-wise from the feds and state, we're looking at around 12,000 in tax credits. We actually started this process last year and because it wasn't finished until this year, this will happen on our taxes coming up. So we're looking forward to that. The reason we went with two power walls, um, initially we were gonna go with one, but that would not have backed up the whole house in case for whatever reason there was a system-wide shutdown of TEP or something. Um, so we went with two. And actually kind of glad that we did. And there is a little bit of a discount when you buy two power walls as well. Um, at the time when we kind of did our system, there was a discount for doing solar plus power walls. And I think I just heard that Tesla is again selling power walls on their own. Whereas for a long time, you could only buy power walls with the system itself. That's kind of the system in a nutshell. Let's take a look at that real quick so you get an idea of what it all looks like. So one of the things I wanted to mention real quick is, you know, basically Tesla determines the size of your system. You upload your electric bill for the last year. They kind of determine how much usage you have and how much you would need to cover that. Or I think it's covered 90% or 95%. I don't remember exactly now. Um, our average electric bill around here was about $170 a month. The house is about 2,500 square feet. It's just a slump block house. So it's not very well insulated, even though we do have new windows in here. Um, just a flat roof. We have a pool, I have my shop. Um, we do have natural gas as well, but obviously AC here in the summer is pretty expensive. And we had bills as high as like 370, I wanna say. One of the main reasons we went with solar is essentially the way things have been changing in the last couple of years. Uh, energy costs are skyrocketing, even though they are still relatively cheap here in Arizona. Uh, we just wanted to have some control over that. Um, just, I'm not gonna get po political. <laughs> I don't wanna do that, that's not what this is about, but. We, this is, we did not do this, um, no offense to anybody, but we're not doing this to save the planet or because we think, you know, gas and oil is a terrible thing. Uh, we just wanted some control. Uh, we do have the Tesla and the Volt, so that's has added about $60 to the electric bill as well. So having the power walls and having the system is going to give us the ability to reduce those uh, costs. And with the incentives from the government, we're looking at probably around 10 years to... Um, pay off the system, or at least get our money back out of the system, I should say. And that would change when rates go up and down and all that good stuff. But right now we're sitting at 12 cents a kilowatt here in Arizona. They are have already put in to raise the price this year. I have no idea what it's going to go to, um, but we'll see how it goes. So that's, uh, that's that. Let's move on to um, the, kind of the timeline of ordering how long this all took and what you're in for after you hit submit when um, starting the whole process. The ordering process is pretty straightforward for the most part. 
And we're going to go over the timeline here of how it all kind of went together. But first step is to pay your $250. Tesla's going to ask you to do a site assessment where you take photos of your panel, the area around your panel, your roof, and any major electrical appliances that could affect the system, such as uh, your AC unit, in my case, a pool pump, things of that nature. Once you submit that to Tesla, you actually get a response back from them pretty quickly. And I want to say we had a design back to us within about seven to 10 days, which was kind of cool. From there, you can either approve your design, um, ask to make changes, ask questions, do whatever you want to do there. But for us, it actually worked out really well. They put it in a place that was very usable for us. Um, again, I have a flat roof and I have no trees or anything to worry about as far as sunshine goes. It's from morning to evening, it's bright sunshine all the way across our roof. So that works out really well. So looking at the timeline here, I have this stuff jotted down. So I just want to be accurate. So you kind of know the specific dates and all that stuff. We started the process on 630 of 22 for the second time. Um, the first time we actually submitted, got a design back and then canceled it because our hope was to put it the solar system on our metal building, which we found out at the time, Tesla was only installing on one type of metal building roof, which we didn't have. My understanding is now they do not install it all on metal buildings, just FYI. Pretty much that same day, you're gonna get back that request to do that aside assessment. And then down the line, we got a solar purchase agreement on 7-5 of 22. And that was, um, the original purchase that we did, which is just one power wall. And so then on 8, 9, 22, we added the second power wall. So that was really kind of the start of the finish, I guess, start of the finish of the purchase agreement. So they knew exactly what we wanted. Um, and then Tesla actually comes out and does a site assessment. They look at your roof, they look at your panel, probably just making sure there's not gonna be any huge hiccups. On 8, 8, we actually approved our equipment and everything was cool because they had done their site assessment. So it was all good to go. And then on 810, we got the full plans, like detailed drawings and all that stuff. And our permits were accepted actually on 88 as well. So there are two processes that kind of slowed this down a little bit related to Tucson Electric Power. And the first one was um, I had to sign some paperwork via DocuSign from TEP, is a meter socket adapter. And then the other one was I don't have, or we did not have on our panel, a shutoff switch. So those two things had to be added and that kind of came through TEP and I believe those were extra permits or at least took extra documents that had to be taken care of. On 9-1 of 2022, TEP let us know that there was a solar interconnection application started. Um, they basically have to approve the whole system, make sure Tesla is designing it correctly, all that other stuff. On 9-6 was the TEP design review, and then they approved it on 9-19. So that was about 20 days there. Um, on 9-23, we were notified that our power walls and the solar panels were gonna be installed on November 9th of 2022. And the guys actually showed up very early to install. There were two crews here we had, two guys doing the uh, power wall install, which seemed to kind of be harder of the two systems. A lot of stuff going on there. And then we had another crew of probably three or four people installing the solar panels. They had mentioned that they were gonna cut power during that time. They never had to do it while I was here. So just be aware of that. Uh, it is rather loud. So if you have dogs that are sensitive or any other animals sensitive to noises, uh, keep that in mind because there's a lot of banging, getting the running the electrical along the roof after they get the panels in the install of the solar panels and I just wanted to give you an idea of what's going on in here noise wise while they're doing this all right guys so they finished up about 45 minutes ago they were here from pretty much nine till about three o'clock and really cool guys super efficient they finished the roof uh, all the wiring and the panels on the roof in like three hours they were done by noon and they were just working on the power walls over here and putting in a disconnect. On 12-3 of 2022, TEP set an appointment for us on January 5th of 2023 to pull the old meter, put in the new one, and allow uh, Tesla to install their communication port that kind of links the two systems together. Um, takes about five minutes, and that went really well. On that same day, they were supposed to come out 
and initiate the system, I think, and set up the app and all that. Never heard anything from that second crew. Thankfully, I was actually off the next day and they showed up around, I think it was 7 or 7.30 the next morning. Took me through the app, tested the system out, made sure it was all working, and then shut it back down because it wasn't finally approved yet. Then we were waiting for an inspection from the county. It was pretty much one of the last things we were waiting for. That was on set up for a 120 of 23. That all passed. And then after that, once it passed, Tesla asked for payment, um, which you can kind of do in a couple different ways. You can link your checking account to Tesla and make the payment. I suppose if you are not buying the system completely, you could also set up a payment plan for them if you're doing financing or whatever. It was kind of a pain. Uh, I tried multiple times to get my account linked. It just would never work. I also went to my bank and the bank couldn't get it to work either. So there are other options. You can surprisingly use a credit card, which I was kind of surprised about, and or mail in your mail in a check. And that's what we did. So that delayed things about a week, I'm guessing, because it took a while for the check to get there. I was just out of town in and out, out that week. My wife was working full time, so we couldn't we couldn't deal with going to the bank and doing a money transfer and all that other stuff. So uh, the payment was accepted on 131, and then TEP had to review one last time and set a, one other meter in. And I don't know the difference between the main meter and this other meter. I think it's just something that's specifically related to the solar panels. And that was set 214 of 2023. And then we received an email stating that we could power the system on on 223 of 23. So from 630 of 2022 all the way to February 23rd of 2023 is how long this whole process took. When we started it, I was figuring we were going to be six months before everything was finished up. So it was a little bit longer than I expected, but not completely out of what what we thought. I have no idea what it takes for other companies to do this kind of thing. Um, part of the issue here was TEP, and I think part of it was Tesla's busy and getting permits approved and all that other stuff, having to pull the meter. Um, apparently there was only one guy that was pulling meters for a while, so Tesla could do this situation. But regardless, overall, everything was great, not a problem, and the system finally got up and running on the 23rd. So from here, what I wanna do is just take a little bit of time, show you the app, show you how the system's been working, and just talk about that a little bit, even though I'm not an expert by any means on the app. All right, so let's take a look at the app and actually what's going on right now. Um, as you can see, 6.7 kilowatts are being produced right now. My home is using one kilowatt. And essentially what's going on is the priority is to charge the power walls. That's kind of how the system tends to work. Right now, so when you get solar, they switch you to time of use, which means basically peak and off peak. Whereas before it was 12 cents a kilowatt across the board for me. Now I believe off peak is 10 and I wanna say on peak is 14. And then in the, it's 6 a.m. to 9 a.m and 6 p.m. to 9, yes, yeah, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. in the winter. And I wanna say that's April to October. And then summer times are essentially three to seven is peak. Weekends and holidays are all off peak. So I set the app up, and this was one of the frustrating things about the app was trying to dial in all that stuff. And I'll show you here on the app how it's just getting it set up here. You can see the red is kind of peak, but getting all the times and figuring out how the app calculate or makes all that work was a little bit of a pain in the butt, to be totally honest with you. Finally got it though. And uh, yeah, so anyway, finally got that set up. You have, do you have to set up here in Tucson anyway? You got to set up summer and winter, which was kind of interesting. Um, but Let's go here to what's going on with the house. So it's a perfectly sunny day out right now. There's not a cloud in this. Well, it's very light clouds, not very much at all. And we're doing seven kilowatts. Now, if you click the energy button, that's the one on top there, you can see this is the solar production that's happened today. This little blue guy on top is 
that how much the house is using. And then if you hit the power wall, it kind of shows you the charge and then how it's being dispensed. And then the gray here is, is basically energy usage from the grid. So the cool thing is you can kind of slide around and see the previous day. So this was yesterday, it was actually pretty cloudy. Whenever you have those jaggedy looking edges, that means it was cloud. So here's a pretty non-cloudy day. And then at the top there under solar generation, you can see the kilowatt hours that you're producing. And we are in March right now. Today is March, what is today? March 20th. So here, it's starting to obviously get lighter earlier, and this is where we're gonna start warming up here, around here. Um, but pretty cool stuff. So I think the highest solar generation so far was this day here, 55.9 kilowatt hours and 7.7 .7 kilowatts uh, power produced. Um, so let's talk a little bit, again, if you, trying to th think of the best way to just explain this in off peak times and you probably if you know this I'm, I apologize but for those of you who don't so if you have power walls kind of the goal is to charge the power walls so that during peak or peak cost times the power wall dispenses and covers the house um, the cars are set to charge on off peak hours and you know, you pull a little bit from the grid if you need to, but for the most part, the power walls tend to cover all the usage that's needed during peak times, which is kind of the goal. At least so far, it's been doing that in the winter. I think in the summer, when the AC is running, that's going to be a different story, and it'll be interesting to see how that works. But uh, so far, it's been pretty cool. So look there on the app on Impact, you can see that today 83% self-powered, which is kind of neat. And if you click on Impact, it'll kind of break down what you've used. 33% solar, 50% power wall, and 17% grid. And then the total grid usage during the time of use, um, during peak, is 1%. So then you can also scroll back on the different days here and look at different usages along the way which is kind of fun. So that's kind of the highlights of the app. Again, I want to stress that I'm not a, a particularly excellent at the app. So if you look down right now, you can see that we're just producing 1.8 kilowatts. Uh, the house is only using 0.4 kilowatts. So if you follow the yellow line, you can see it's coming, solar's coming in, the power wall's fully charged. So that 0.4 kilowatts is going to the house and the rest of it's being sold back to the grid. The sell back price is not very significant, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that all kind of works out. And I'll have more in another video down the road where I can give you an update on my bill and how all those things are going. Um, at this point, hopefully, this video has hopefully answered some questions for you if you are looking at Tesla Solar. I know it's kind of hard to fo follow the timeline, but essentially it was about seven months from start to finish. Um, Tesla's communication is pretty good. It's a pretty easy process to, to do. You do get someone that you can communicate with. And actually the website has all kinds of answers to questions and things that you can check out as well. But, you know, they were courteous, professional. I think they did a really good job. You can tell by the video I showed you earlier that they did a very nice install. It looks great. I've had a couple people comment on how clean it looks. So, We'll see how it goes and I will keep you updated as I get more numbers back and trying to figure out really how this is gonna go over the summer. I've heard some people say they have their best results in the spring and fall as far as power numbers production because as the solar panels get hot, they don't produce as much energy, which seems kind of ironic <laughs> to a degree. Uh, and Lord knows we get rather warm here uh, over the summer. So again, questions, leave those below. And if I miss something that you really want to know about, you can shoot me an email as well. I really appreciate you watching. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care.